Wednesday and Friday at 5.05 p.m. with your host, DG Angel, and get legal-minded. Remember, ignorance is no excuse of the law. The law. So be in the know of the law. The law. The law. Sponsors of In the Know of the Law are Native Audio Stage and Lighting, Braham Texaco. And good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And do not touch that dial because at the end of this program, you shall know the law. Return to us when we will continue. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for another episode of In the New of the Law. My name is Nicholas Chambers, and I am sitting, I shouldn't say I'm sitting in, I am hosting the program, and normally my co-host, Miss Green, Delrose Green, is here with me. She's not here today, and so we, as, as they say, the show must continue. But before I go on, I want to thank the persons who have made this program possible. Native Audio Stage and Lighting, Braham's Texaco, Task Property Appraisals Company Limited, bringing quality service to you. MT Landscaping Services at Francis Lewis Boulevard in Queens, New York. And other contributors to the program, such as Toys Nails at Shop Number 6, Rosemary Plaza in Martin Bay, St. Thomas. Sadie from York Castle in St. Anne. Errol Barnes from Baltimore in the United States of America. I want to thank you all. And if you also want to contribute to this program by sponsorship or by any other way of contribution, you can contact, contact Stars FM and you will get information on how you may also contribute to the program <clears throat> i as usual you know don't as usual i i i don't seem to understand how to <laughs> as usual it doesn't seem that i have much control over the technology i want to say big up to my uh, my engineer who is sitting in with me this evening cassidy how are you cassidy um, in spite of the fact that Delrose is not here, we're going to be dealing this afternoon with the Registration of Titles Act. It is a very long act. It's a very involved act. It covers many things that has to do with land, land registration, protecting your interest in land, this, and disposing of land. And so we had indicated to you some time ago that for the month of for the month of July, we are going to be discussing land and all matters relating to land. Uh, I want to say welcome to those persons who have joined us on WhatsApp, those persons who have joined us on Stars FM live page. And for those persons who I am trying to add, uh, um, trying to add you through our, what is this, a watch party I must do. Um, don't I do the watch party? Don't work so well. All right. So I'm following my, my, my engineer. He says I must do a watch party. So I am creating a watch party. So for those persons who want to join me on my Facebook live page, you can also join me there. Look me up. It's Nicholas Chambers, and you'll find me there. Before I go into the substantive topic, I want to discuss a few things that are happening across the world that I think um, should concern us or touches and impact how we um, operate as a people in our country and uh, that we should also ensure that we pay attention to. Hong Kong has been having some demonstrations recently. I don't know I don't know how many of you have been following those demonstrations. It started as a as opposition to an intended extradition bill. 
extraditing, well, the bill proposed to extradite persons living in Hong Kong to mainland China, particularly where those persons are found to be in breach of any criminal act, criminal of, uh, are found to have committed any criminal offenses. So uh, it's somewhat like an extradition treaty. And so the protests started as an opposition to that extradition treaty and uh, extradition bill and has morphed somewhat into a kind of violence that Hong Kong is not known to be participant to. They are breaking in stores. Recently, just yesterday, I believe, persons who are donning masks attacked persons in a, in a train station, commuters and created mayhem and panic and hospitalized about 40 persons. It is a, it seems to me that it is a symptom, or it is a result of what seems to be happening across the world where persons have become extreme in how they approach governance, politics, and politicking. It's quite frightening to find that in a country such as Hong Kong that is not used to this kind of violence. It's quite concerning to see that kind of violence being played out there. And when you put that against many of the rhetoric that you hear coming from world leaders across many countries, it, makes, it, it gives you reason to pause and to wonder whether or not we aren't going too far to the left um, with our thinking and our ideology and how we view things. There seems to be a growing intolerance for discussion, free speech, a growing intolerance for persons voicing views that are different or in opposition to our own positions. There was a time when persons could embrace each other even though they had a difference in view. That time seemed to have slipped by. And we are losing touch with the idea that we can live in an inclusive society where not everybody will agree with our views. Not everybody will agree with our beliefs. Not everybody will agree with our lifestyles. Not everybody will agree with our politics. But we can all appreciate the difference between each of us. We are losing touch of that kind of society. We have seen recently we are in the United States. Four congresswomen are now being called jihadists. An advertisement was placed on the Republican <coughs> Party website labeling these four congresswomen as jihadists. Intolerance for, for a difference in opinions and opinion and views are frightening, frighteningly dissipating. It's frighteningly dissipating. Where is it going? And what is replacing it, I find, is fear. Fear of the unknown. Well, you know what fear of the unknown does, folks? It cripples us, you know. What we should do is boldly go where no man dares to go. And we are losing touch of that. So, 
That is what is happening in Co Hong Kong as a result of what seemed to have been opposition to a simple extradition bill, violence. We don't even have to speak about the United States of America. The rhetoric that is now being spewed from no less than the president himself is frightening. And it lends itself to all manner of ill will, hurt, and harm, physical and verbal. We have to step back from the brink and try to control what is happening in how we view differences in opinions and attitudes. Closer to us, Venezuela, there seemed to be some kind of um, breakthrough with talks among the Guaido faction and the president, Mr. Maduro. There is, there is going to be another round of talks. So we can continue to watch that. It is interesting to see how the attempts at de destabilization in Venezuela, you know, it is quite interesting. It is my view that there was an attempt to de destabilize it. And it, 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 seemed, it seems that the destabilization tactics have not worked. Maduro is still there. And the wider opposition, I hear that they have received, I think, most, I think some 10 million U.S. Um, diverted from monies that were supposed to be spent on immigration. Um, well, not immigration, monies that were supposed to be spent assisting countries such as Honduras with their immigration challenges. And... Uh, those monies, I understand, have now been, it is speculated, has been diverted to Mr. Guaido, and so he's now calling for a new protest. I don't know to what end, though. I, I don't know where it is that we're going with it. But that is one to watch. Closer to home again, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Grenadines is about to um, confirm their first female governor general. I think that's an achievement. I think there are other countries who have had female governor general and governors general, I believe. But I think Dominica, if I'm not incorrect. Um, Dame, Dame, um, there, there's another country as well, but I, I'm not recalling from the top of my head now. So that's closer to home. That's happening there. Um, but so many things happening around the world. It is really for us to keep an eye on it oh china china has now created a stock market similar to nasdaq because of the um the trade war that is going on between the u.s and china so folks may want to watch that as well to see where that goes because china seems to be consolidating what is happening in its country to stave off the uh, repercussions from the trade war with the u.s um, so, <clears throat> and I hear that the, the stock market, since they've started it, is doing quite fine. So, that's something to watch, folks. Um, but back to the substantive topic. The Registration of Titles Act. And I, as I indicated, it's a very involved act. I am going to be starting at section 24 as the other sections are really administrative sections um, which i don't think should detain us i don't believe should detain us and so i won't i won't detain us with it at all um what i what i should do here now cassidy uh, you see i tell you folks i don't seem to understand this thing here you know but I'm tagged in it, yes? So folks can see it on my Facebook. But how do I see who is watching me? Right, so while my engineer tries to figure out my technological challenges, 
Section 24 says land may be brought under the operation of this act by the registrar regis registering the title of some person thereto as the proprietor in a manner provided, hereinafter after provided. I'm going to skip out some of the old English, the hereinafter, after, thereto, thereof, that sort of thing, and try to make it as um, user-friendly as possible. The title of any person to land brought under the operation of this act shall be registered either as an absolute or as a qualified title. Section 26 goes on to say, a person registered under the act as a proprietor of land with an absolute title shall be entitled to hold it together with all rights, privileges, all rights and privileges belonging thereto, belonging, uh, uh, runs with the lands, but subject as follows. To the encumbrances, if any, entered on the certificate of title. And encumbrances are things that restrict how the land is used or things that run with the land, such as a right of way. And right of way, we mean an easement. Well, we mean a walkway. So if you have a land and you have a piece of it where persons normally walk across, to access their land, either behind you or beside you. Um, and you, you can register that on the title. So that's an encumbrance. Some persons may have the Jamaica Public Service who has wires running over the land. That's an encumbrance that run with the land. <coughs> and many other encumbrances. So those are what are called encumbrances. Things that affect the use, use of the land. Um, it's also subject to such liabilities, rights, and interests as may, under the provision, provisions of this act, subsist over land brought under this act without being entered on the certificate of, of title as an encumbrance, but free from all other estates and interests whatsoever, including estates and interests of Her Majesty, her heirs and successors, save only rents property tax or other impo impositions charged generally on lands in Jamaica that have accrued and is owing to the government. <coughs> and that is basically saying, folks, that once you register your property, you get all the privileges that come with being a registered title owner. There are many persons out there who have lands that are not registered. They don't have a title for it. Um, it has not been brought under reg the Registration of Titles Act. And so that section is simply saying that once you register the property, all the rights that comes with the property, you get it once you have that title in your possession. Now remember, we spoke about absolute title and we spoke about Qualified title. And I'm, com I'm going to interact with my friends on WhatsApp. I'm coming to you in just a few minutes. A person registered under this act as a proprietor of any land with a qualified title. Qualified title shall be entitled to hold such land. You can't figure it out. Shall be entitled. <laughs> Cassidy is stumped, folks. <laughs> Cassidy is stumped. I say nothing more. Um... A person registered under this act as proprietor of any land with a qualified title shall be entitled to hold such land except as against any person claiming any estate right or interest therein arising before a specified date or under a specified instrument or otherwise as particularly described in the certificate of title. And the registration of a person with a qualified title shall have the same effect as a registration of, of a person with an absolute title, save and accept that registration with a qualified title shall not affect or prejudice the enforcement of any estate right or interest appearing on the certificate of title to be accepted. And provided always that the person registered as a qualified title owner may at any time thereafter apply to be registered as an absolute 
title, with an absolute title, subject to all the provisions relating to an original application. So what can happen sometimes, the registrar of title may grant a title to an individual, but the registrar may have concerns. The referee of title may have concerns. Um, they, they may have some questions that they may still want to have answered. And so they will give you a qualified title with certain qualifications. So it may say you can't do certain things until this is done or you have a title subject to this being done or, or some other thing being done. So it, 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 it's not an absolute title that give you, gives you all the privileges um, that gives you all the privileges as someone who has an absolute title. And so that has to be borne in mind as well when, um, when you are applying for a title. Yes? So just keep all of those in mind that they can either be, they can either be a qualified title or an absolute title. Um, Winsome Smith on Facebook Live says, Pleasant evening, Mr. Chambers. I enjoy your program and learn lots of things. Thanks you. Thank you, Winsome. Winsome also says, um, Blessings to Styles FM. Um, thank you, Winsome. Continue to watch us. And we hope, um, we hope that we can continue to bring you wholesome information that will assist you. I see with me joining me on WhatsApp. Yes, <coughs> this is where Cassidy assists me now because as usual, I'm a blind man. I see um, Wagati. Good evening, DG Angel from, from St. Thomas, Dalvin St. Thomas. Thank you for joining us, Wagati, as usual. Um, welcome to class. I also see here Carla from out of Maypen in Clarendon. Thank you for joining us, Carla. Good evening, Mr. Chambers. Say hi to DG for me. I will do that. I also see here Jody, Jodian. Yes, from St. Mary. Good afternoon, Mr. Chambers. I trust that you are doing well. Looking forward to a wonderful program. Thank you, Jodian, for your being in class, and uh, we hope that you'll continue to join us in class. We also have, I also have here um, Ricardo, um, Nicholas, big up, um, Ricardo. Thank you for joining us, Ricardo, and we hope that you will continue. Ricardo, what's that, Portius? <coughs> hope that you'll continue. I see a name that I can't pronounce. Um, he says, good afternoon, Mr. Chambers and Cassidy. I'm present in class. Cassidy, you know who that is? Uh, I, I can't spell you. But what is that? I, how is that pronounced? That person's name? With a clasp, clasp hands and, and, and a heart. It, 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 it's Angel? Is that Angel? Oh, it's Angel. Oh, it's It's Angel. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, yes, it's Angel. It's DG Angel. Yes, good afternoon, my co-host. I'm glad to have you joining us by WhatsApp. And we hope that you will also contribute. And thank you for joining class. Also from Calgary, Ian, good evening. Um, he says, good evening, lady and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, um, Ian from Calgary. Thank you for joining the class, and we hope that you'll continue to join us in class. Lecky? That Lecky, um, Lenky. Okay, good evening, Sir Chambers. Lenky from Port Martin St. Thomas. Thank you for joining us, Lenky. Thank you for being in class with us. This evening, we're speaking about the Registration of Titles Act. And so if you know anyone who can benefit from hearing this discussion, um, in respect of any land that they need to register or should be registering. You can call their attention to the program. And we also hope that if you have land that you also want to um, register, bring under the Registration of Titles Act, that this, these discussions will assist you. We're going to be having a surveyor who is going to be joining us um, 
at some point, perhaps on Wednesday. I'm trying to see if I can get him on Wednesday. Who's going to be joining us um, to speak about the role of a surveyor in bringing um, land under the Registration of Titles Act. We're going to also have a valuator who's going to speak to us about the role of the valuator in bringing lands under the Registration of Titles Act. I see, who is this, Novlet? Good evening, Novlet from out of Toronto. Thank you for joining class, Novlet. Um, we hope that you will continue to join us. So I'll now move to section 28 of the Act. And it says, any of the following persons may, by an application addressed to the registrar, apply to have land brought under the operation of the Registration of Titles Act. And these are the persons. Persons claiming to be the owner, either in law or in equity. Um, <clears throat> when we say in law and equity, you're, if you are claiming to be the owner by way of purchase um, or, or otherwise, uh, by way of purchase, by way of inheritance, well, not inheritance, by way of purchase, um, that's considered to be owner in law. In equity, if it's by inheritance, let's say it was will to you, okay, so then it, you'd be the owner in equity until, of course, it passes to you properly. So that's an example of law and equity, owner by law or equity. Persons who collectively claim to be the owners, they can also apply. Um, so family members or other persons together who say they own the land, they can apply. Um, persons who have the power of dispossessing of land, they can also apply, provided that in the event of such land being brought on the, op the operation of the Act, such application shall be deemed both at law and in equity to be and to have been an exercise of such power that they have. <coughs> persons claiming to be the owner of the first estate or the freehold, if the owner of the first vested estate of inheritance shall consent to the application. So if um, one person inherited it and uh, they are, they are um, uh, another person is applying by virtue of also being in line to inherit, that person can apply as well. Trustees can apply. Um, so trustees of property and um, are persons who hold um, estates on trust, those persons can apply. Um, guardians of infants, they can apply as well, or a committee for the estate of any lunatic or person of unsound mind. Uh, we haven't changed the law to, to, to remove lunatic from our Expressions, well, is there. So the essay, the committee of the estate of any lunatic or person of unsound mind, um, unable to manage, who is unable to manage their estate, th those persons, that guardian can also bring an application. The commission of lands can bring an application as well, or any duly authorized officer um, in writing by the minister on behalf of the Crown, um, person or persons claiming to be the owner or owners of um, the fee tail upon a sale by him um, <coughs> for value, they can also apply. So where, where someone holds a life interest and after their death it goes to a particular individual, yes, the, those persons may also apply. Um, a tenant for life, um, as I indicated, they can apply to bring the land under the, the act as well. Provided always, however, that a mortgager <coughs> shall not be entitled to make such application unless the mortgagee shall consent nor a mortgagee unless for the purpose of the exercise of his power of sale. So someone who has a mortgage to, 
to, let's say, um, a financial institution can't apply for a title unless the financial institution consent to the title being granted and subject, of course, to their mortgage being registered. Um, and a mortgage can... A mortgagee can be an individual as well. doesn't necessarily need to be a financial institution. So an individual can give a mortgage. Sadie, I see you have joined us as well. Thank you for joining us as usual. Um, thank you for being in class. So an individual can be a mortgagee. So I, I can be, Cassidy can have a piece of land that is unregistered. And um, he wants some money to do something. And I give him a loan. And we write, we, we write an agreement to say that I have a mortgage over this unregistered piece of land. And if Cassidy goes to try and register the land, of course, he can't register it because he would have to get my consent first to, um, to bring the land under the Registration of Titles Act. So, so unless there is consent, nor mortgagee, unless for the purposes of the exercise of its power of sale, and unless the certifi certificate of title shall be directed to issue in the purchaser's name, nor, nor can a married woman, unless she, she shall be entitled to the land for her separate use, or has a power to appoint the same, or unless her husband shall consent, and the application shall be acknowledged by her in the same manner as any deed or other instrument. Provided also that the attorney for any corporation, however, howsoever and wheresoever incorporated, whether already constituted or to be constituted, appointed under a seal purporting to be the common seal of the corporation, may make such an op application. So an attorney for a company can make an application to bring a certain to bring land under the registration of titles act on behalf of the company. Um Dame Damian from Tampa, I think this is Tampa, Florida. Um this is Upliftness, Mr. Chambers. Give thanks for your commentary at the beginning of the program. Blessings. Thank you, um Damian. I try to make sure that I stay current with current affairs so that I can share what I view to be things that should concern us I mean, the wider, on the international scale. Princess from out of St. Thomas. He says, where are we? Nice program. Good evening. How are you? I'm good, Princess. I hope all is well with you as well. Thank you for joining us. Marvin from out of St. Catherine. Yes. All the way out there in St. Catherine. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Mr. Chambers. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening to you as well, Marvin. And for those persons who are joining us on our app, our Stars FM app. What's that? For on our Stars FM app, thank you for joining us as well. And I know those persons will be listening to us right across the world. Um, there is Maxine as well from... Hold on. What did I say a while ago? Oh, he's not Marvin. Oh, forgive me, folks. It, it's the, the challenges of my eyesight. It's Maxine, not Marvin. Oh, did I get Marvin from MAX um, Cassidy? Maxine from St. Catherine. Thank you for joining us, Maxine. Section 29 says that every such application shall be accompanied. So when you make the application to bring your unregistered land under the Registration of Titles Act, meaning to get your title, every such application shall be accompanied by the deed, by any deed or document or other evidence that the applicant relies on in support of his title. And that means if you purchase the property, you should exhibit an agreement for sale when you're applying for that title. If it was given to you by way of gift, you may want to um, exhibit a deed of gift. If it was given to you by will, you may want to exhibit the probated will. If you are inheriting it by way of administration of estate, you may want to um, 
you may want to exhibit the grant of administration. So any document on which you're relying for the, the, the title, for making the application for the title, you have to attach those as well. And by an affidavit containing such particulars as may be prescribed, and by the fees that are or that should be paid, and by a cert certificate from the proper officer that all monies that are to be paid are paid. Somebody calling. Um, I see. As well as you have to show that you are in compliance with your property tax payments as well. Um, and you have to also. Somebody saying here on the. This is the text line. So d somebody on the text line is saying here. I'll just call the last three numbers 224 on the text line. Mr. Chambers, I have a parcel of land and it's a long time now. I've had the parcel of land and it's a long okay, okay. And I've been going to the tax. Can it, I've been going to the tax office in Moran Bay. And they are telling me that they can't. They are telling me that they can't locate the name. It's the name it's in is Okay, and it's in Dalvi. The person tells me their name along the main road. Yes, but on a little hill. What can I do? Um, <coughs> I, I gather, and the person is saying they had some tax papers, but it was destroyed in a hurricane. I, you're going to need to speak to an attorney. Um, 224. Um, Doreen, you're going to need to pay your taxes. Uh, you're going to need to speak to an attorney uh, to see whether or not an application can be made to have your name <coughs> placed on the tax roll as the person, as owner and person in possession. And you may also want to retain an attorney. You may also want to speak to that attorney about assisting you in bringing that piece of land under the Registration of Titles Act. So if you had, if you were paying the taxes and those tax papers seem to be destroyed, you're saying, and for some reason or the other, it can't be located at the tax office, you're going to need an attorney to assist you. Um, you may also want to consult a surveyor as well, um, simultaneously with your attorney, and your attorney might be able to guide you to a surveyor that you can speak with who may be able to assist you in identifying the property and uh, identifying the information that you may need to uh, present to the tax office to sort that out. But speak to an attorney, and uh, I'm sure that the attorney will be able to assist you. So thank you for joining on the text line. For those who want to join us on the, want to send us their views, comments, or any questions that you may have on the text line, the number is 876, Cassidy, help me here, 453-1444. That's 876-453-1444, 1444. Yes, you can join us by text um, and give us your views as well. So every application should be accompanied by the document on which you're relying to get the title, by an affidavit containing um, information in respect of your application. You must pay the fees um, that accompanies the application. And you must also, and what happens is that when you retain an attorney to assist you in making the application for a title, they, there's a certain document, um, the application, that has to go down by the stamp office. It has to be assessed. And then once it is assessed, you pay the assessment fee, transfer tax, registration fee, stamp duty, of course, which is a flat fee now of $5,000. And uh, then it is sent to the title's office. So that's how you pay the relevant fees. You have to make sure you pay the <coughs> property tax. So you have to pay up all the taxes on the land and get a certificate um, to see that the taxes have been paid up. Um, and buy a receipt of... Um, 
from an officer showing that all duties have been paid. Provided that if any such deed or documents are recorded, it shall be sufficient for the applicant to give references to that particular document. If the applicant believes that they, should, they are only entitled to a qualified title, must state it in the application the nature of the qualification that he believes his title should be subjected to. And section 30 says a person applying to have any land brought under the operation of the Registration of Titles Act shall describe and identify the land in any one or other of the following ways, either by plot or diagram or by meters and bounds. It is always advised that you get a surveyor to prepare a diagram when you're making that application. And then as I say, if you speak to an attorney, that attorney will be able to will be able to assist you with guiding you on all the things that you will need to accompany that particular application. You may also need what is called declarations um, from persons who know the property for over 30 years to see how it is that they know the property and whether they can speak to um, your knowledge of ownership of the property. So all of these things um, you can. I, I have seen where persons sometimes, <coughs> you can make the application on your own, you know, folks. Um, you're not prevented from doing so at all. I've seen where persons have made applications on their own and it has been successful. Um, but the numbers of persons who have made applications on their own and have not been successful is much higher than those that were successful because there are many things that you must pay attention to that an attorney may, uh, that an attorney is trained to, to um, assist with and to ensure that the requirements are satisfied that you may not be able to um, fully comply with. So again, my advice is get an attorney to assist you in the application process. Now the registrar section 30, 31 says that the registrar shall submit the application together with the deeds, documents or other evidence to a referee for the referee's direction. And if the referee shall on consideration of the documents or deeds <coughs> or other evidence be of the opinion that of the opinion that the applicant is a person entitled to make the application and that he is in possession by himself or a tenant of the land described or identified in the application and that he would be entitled to maintain and defend such possession against any other person claiming <coughs> the land or any part of the land, he shall provisionally approve the registration of the title of the applicant or his nominee as an absolute title to the land described or identified in the application. So, <coughs> as I indicated earlier, it goes to a referee who will vet the application. The referee may send what is called a requisition asking for additional information. Or the referee might say, I am satisfied that this person properly can make this application and therefore can be issued with a provisional, can be issued with this title. Now, Keep in mind, the referee may have further questions. The referee may want additional information, and that is why it is advised that you seek the assistance of an attorney in making the application to bring the land um, to getting the title, to acquiring your title for the land. Um, <coughs> Cassie, if you can assist me here, Princess, I believe, is asking a question here. Um, so, Princess is saying, what if you have a piece of land, no papers for it, how can you go about legalizing that land? <coughs> if you have a piece of land, Princess, and you have no documents to it, there is a way in which you can acquire the title. Again, consult your attorney, and your attorney can guide you. Um you're going to have to give your attorney some instructions as to how you came in.
possession of the land, how long you have been in possession of the land, um, and why it is that you are entitled to a title to bring in the land under the Registration of Titles Act, and the attorney will know, will will then guide you on how it is the application should be made, depending on the instructions that you give to that attorney. So, um, how you get the land under the Registration of Titles Act, Princess, is going to be dependent on the instructions that you give your attorney. So again, my advice is to con um, consult with an attorney on um, about the property, and that attorney will guide you on how best it is you can bring that piece of land under the Registration of Titles Act. But back to section 31 and the discussion about the referee. It says that if the referee shall be of the opinion that the ap applicant is entitled to make the application and that he is in possession <coughs> substantially of the land described or identified and that he would be entitled to maintain and def defend such possession as against any other person claiming that piece of land and that the land of which the applicant is in is in such possession, though the evidence is insufficient as to the description or identification given in the application, is capable of being described or identified in any other way in which it might have been described or identified in the application, he shall provisionally approve the registration. So even if you can't properly describe that property for which you are seeking to bring the land under the Registration of Titles Act. The, regis the referee can still provisionally approve the application if the description is sufficient so that the referee can understand the description of the property or get a, fair, a good sense of the description or so much so that the referee can ascertain a uh, full and better description from some other source he can provisionally approve the registration of the title for the applicant or his nominee as an absolute title to, land, to the land as described in the application. In either of the two cases mentioned, if the referee shall be of the opinion, of the opinion except that the applicant does not satisfy him, that he would be entitled to maintain and defend his possession against any person whose estate, right of interest might arise before a specified date or under a specified instrument or might be otherwise particularly described, he shall provisionally approve the registration of the title of the applicant or his nominee as a qualified title. So if the registrar does not, is not satisfied that the applicant, so if, if after you made the application, the referee, I said the registrar, the referee is not satisfied you that you can maintain um, and defend your possession of the property. So if the registrar feel that there might be somebody who is better entitled to the property, um, the registrar may give you a qualified title to the land and shall specify the nature of the qualified title to, to the land and shall specify, in, shall specify the nature of the qualified title and the qualification, the nature of the qualification to which the title is to be subjected to. So as I indicated to you, the referee may have further questions. The referee may demand or require further information. And so the, uh, Cassidy, if you can pick up some of the persons who are on our uh, Styles Live, Facebook Live, so I can um, give them a shout out as well. Um, can bring them up so I can say hi and good evening to them as well. So I want to say um, welcome. I want to say thank you to all the persons who are joining us on the Styles FM Facebook page live. And in a few, in a minute or two, I'm going to. Um, give a, a shout out as well. So that's section 31 in respect of the application to bring um, the land under the Registration of Title Act. Now, as I said, encumbrances would run with the land. Section 32 speaks to what encumbrances 
should not prevent, shall not prevent the approval of the title. It shall be no objection to the referee approving any title um, aforesaid. As, as said before, that the land is subject to any liabilities, rights, or interests which under the provisions of this act need not be entered on the certificate of title as encumbrances or that the land is subject to any encumbrance not being a mortgage and the owner whereof shall not have consented to the application which may be specified in the certificate of title and continue outstanding. So if there is any interest or liabilities of rights that need not be entered on the certificate of title, the referee can't, um, can't prevent the registration of um, the registration of the title for those purposes. Have we been able to bring the, those persons up as in? Um, let me give a quick shout out to um, Duke from out of Portland who have joined, Andre McPherson who have joined as well, Pa Paquesi, Paquesi, yes, I think Paquesi was, um, um, if I remember correctly, Paquesi was in England at the time. It's England, I believe. Yes. Um, Jacqueline, I see you as well. Paul Harris, I see you as well. Jody, um, see you there as well. Chongi, I know that you have also joined us in class. And Pauline, um, those are just some of the persons who I see there who have joined, huh? who have joined us. I think there may be some more here. Um, some additional persons who have also joined us. I also see um, Kedi, Kedi Babwe Kelly, um, Trishan, Camille, thank you for joining us. Um, get with it. Oh, okay. Um, Kelleen, Andrea, um, Amara. Join us from where? You need to tell us where you join when you join. Uh, oh, I see somebody here. Ricardo Portillo says Grenada's first female governor general is Cecile La Cecile La Grenade. Grenade? I, I don't know how you pronounce Grenadie. Grenade or oh Grenadie. I see. Okay, thank you for that. And he also says Barbados' his first female governor general is Nita Barrow. Oh, thank you for that, Ricardo. I see you're, 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 you're listening, man. Um, he also says Antigua and Barbados. What? Antigua and Barbados' first female governor general is Dame. Yes. Um, Dame Louis Lake Tack. And um, the, the governor general who is about in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> Who is about to be um who is about to get her instrument from Her Majesty the Queen is Susan Dugan, who is a teacher um, by profession um and rose through the ranks of the teaching profession. Why you full you're full of information, man Ricardo Ricardo. Ricardo says Bahamas' first female governor general was Doris Sands Johnson. Um thank you for that, Ricardo. Davian. Nikoi and Philip, I recognize you joining us as well, and I want to thank you for having joined us. I believe my time has expired for this evening. We're going to go on, as I said, to, um, on Wednesday. Hopefully, we will have um, a surveyor with us where we're going to discuss the role of the surveyor in assisting to bring the application under the Registration of Titles Act. Remember, we spoke about a diagram. He said, surveyor who would assist you in getting that diagram. Um, you may also need, instead of a diagram, a surveyor's report, depending on how it is that you're making that application. And so our surveyor will, will speak to, to that as well. I want to thank you all for having joined us this evening. Um, to all the persons who joined us on WhatsApp, um, thank you for joining us. To all the persons who joined us on our live Facebook page on Stars FM, and uh, to the person who have joined 
joined us on my personal uh, 